Hello, everybody. My name is Rick McCutcheon. I'm a Dynamics 365 MVP. And today on Partner Talks, I have a very special guest, John Rivers. John, introduce yourself and tell the people what you're up to. So what have I been up to? Well, so my my volunteer job, well, let's go from that because that's taking up a lot of my time at the moment, is um, I actually volunteer as a board member for Directions North America. I actually run all the content um, and actually pulling that day together. Luckily, I have a team that actually helps me. So that's one of the things that's uh, eating a lot of my time in a good way because I like to give back to the community. When I'm not doing that and when uh, I actually look for how I get an, a page, if you say, and put uh, food on the table, um, I actually run two marketing agencies, uh, one called Marketeering and another one called Marketing Monarchs. Okay, fantastic. So we're going to talk about Directions, the partner conference uh, coming up uh, in Orlando in a few weeks. Um, but I want to say, I want to thank you for last year inviting me down to, to speak at that conference because you know, there's, there's a real gap in our world of dynamics for partner events. And I got to tell you, Directions was probably the best partner event I have been to in many years. And I think you and your team of volunteers are doing a great job and a great service to the partner community. And we appreciate that feedback. It was, um, it was great to have you there and great for you to bring in uh, some of the other side of the conversation and not uh, be non-BC, should we say, but or even NAV, but at the same time, um, it's critical because a lot of partners need to either set their own practices up for that side of the fence or look to partner, right? So bringing you in and others um, it is actually helping us evolve. But uh, yeah, if I go back to your comment about um, the event and how it's put together, um, it's always been top of mind when we start uh, pulling events together is that we want a quality event we look at we don't look at maybe the bottom tier for anything and try to be a little bit not always the top top tier but we want a, a good experience right we want people to come back um, and uh, make make people feel comfortable um, and that's really the key okay so let's talk a little bit about uh, the 2023 event and um, what can partners expect if they sign up to go head down to Florida? Well, I can tell you now from a content, I'm just going to go on the content side. The amount of uh, content, the quality of sessions which were submitted, which we're working our way through. And uh, I'm going to give a plug for you, Rick, here, because you're helping us on the CE track, right? So you're volunteering some hours there as well. But we had close to 300 sessions that we're going through. Um, we only have space for about 130-ish sessions, but we also have to take into consideration that we bring in about 50% of those sessions from Microsoft themselves. So we bring, uh, bring across um, a big group from uh, Europe in to do a lot of those sessions. So if you start to narrow it down, if I was just to say, look, 130, and we narrow that down, what are we running at 65 sessions? We've got to find but we've got to narrow that down from th nearly 300. So it's, um, I hate to have to do it to some of the speakers that we may not be able to get them. Um, but at the same time, we're looking at trying to see if we can bring multiple speakers together and, and build uh, round tables, workshops. But let me go back and highlight the tracks that we have, right? So we talk on the dev side. That's always been a very, very strong area for us. We have a track on consulting. Another um, very big track, uh, typically we have hundreds in the room um, that for both of those tracks out of the gate. We have a new to BC, right? There's still a lot of folks who are still not um, familiar with BC and still learning. Um, so there's some amazing content that's coming in there again for 23. Um, we also have, and it actually started during COVID and we've been expanding it out. We have a dedicated session for the Power Platform. Um, and I've heard some rumors um, that we may be starting to get a little bit more uh, content from Microsoft around Power Automate as well. Um, but what I will say is that last year was the first year we had Ryan Cunningham um, from the Microsoft team, who's going to be there again this year with his team. And actually, I believe, um, hearing that it's probably going to be bigger, um, can't confirm that 100%, but um, that's uh, where it's leading. So we're going to have some great sessions on that side. 
uh, we have what we call a CE track, right? So that encompasses many of the products that sit on that umbrella. And you probably could speak to it better than I can, Rick, right? So of all the, all the different products that sit under, but if we can just take the simple ones, right? The CRM, the field services is just a couple of them, right? Um, those we're trying to bring topics. At the end of the way the committee looks at it and the way the group or the board looks at it, any product that's integral to the BC NAV space that Microsoft has, it's important to be there. And you know what, John, I just want to hit on that for a second, yeah. because, um, you know, I kind of sat on the sideline for a few years watching BC evolve, right? And at first, you know, we're saying it was going to be a, an upgrade for QuickBooks Enterprise, right? Or some of the lower end stage products, and that's where we're going to position it. But the product kept growing. And then the ISVs got involved. Now the ISVs are building out much more functionality to it. So really... BC is not just a mid-market ERP. It's getting to be a core piece of this whole Microsoft cloud strategy where we're seeing, you know, where are all these great planes customers going to go? They look like many are going to BC, but we're also seeing the F&O um, finance and operation partners saying, you know what? I've got to start thinking about adding a BC component to my business because, you know, I've got a lot of customers that are sort of sitting in between you know, whether they upgrade from AX and go to finance and operations, but maybe Business Central can help them. Or they're, they have a company with many subs and those subs have to operate independently. They're using BC for that. So I think it's becoming a, a much more important product in this ERP set of Microsoft. I would 100% agree. And actually talking about F&O partners coming, I was ha happened to talk to one the other day um, that actually is starting to think about it. I mean, that's not, the only one, right? But there's many. Um, that was just one. And I mean, they have a big F&O practice today. But um, going back to your comment about BC, it's sort of focused on the SMB, but it, in some places, it can start to touch the enterprise side, right? So it is uh, a pretty expandable product. And then when, when you put the ISVs in there, then you really have a lot of flexibility. Um, when we're seeing not some of the, uh, I would say some of the historic NAV ISVs coming in and, and actually making sure they support, but we're starting to see new ISVs coming in and we're seeing ISVs that historically are coming from other ERPs and starting to look at integration. So for that to happen, that, that I think it's all a good thing in the long run, right? So there's a lot of excitement there. I think there's a lot of great future um, and this market's only going to grow. So, John, for a partner who's never been to Directions, um, let's kind of talk a little bit about how many partners are going to be there and, you know, how many days is the conference and how does it roll? So we start on uh, typically, officially, the, uh, the event starts on Sunday and it will go through to Wednesday lunchtime. Um, we do have sometimes there will be some um, ISV and other events happening on the Saturday. Normally, there's uh, most of those are invitation only. Um, so there are some things happening on the day before. Um, so that's where we start to go. We are tracking probably at the moment to be our biggest ever event. Um, prior to COVID, we were in the Red Rock out in Vegas, and we had um, high 900s. We were getting close to 1,000 attendees, uh, 22 just a, slight, just a little bit under that high number, but coming off of COVID, we were pretty proud of where we got to because I think um, we were projecting something only around 600 people. So to get over 900 people, I mean, that's uh, a pretty good growth. And there was a lot of people. So this time around, um, we are looking way over 1,000. Um, and, yeah, and I think this is just my personal. This is not necessary uh, directions writing it. I have a gut feeling that we'll be closer to 11. Wow, that, that's great. And I got to tell you, last year, the networking, networking was outstanding. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of people I hadn't seen in quite a long time, but a lot of new people. Uh, everybody's looking to, and, and the, the spirit of partner to partner is very strong there. How can we help each other? Okay, John, I want to thank you for your time today. And I'm sure we'll be back talking more about uh, directions and we'll see you in April in Orlando. Yep, I look forward to seeing everyone and thanks for having me today. Bye for now. Thanks.